Glad to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. Are you? Didn't we have a good service this morning? We had 60. They showed up. Thank God for all of them. And thank God for you tonight. They came back for a double blessing. And, you know, this was a beautiful day that the Lord gave us. And I rejoiced in it, and I believe you did too. Thanks be unto God for all of his many blessings. I know there are those that are not here this evening that would have been if they hadn't had to work. And, you know, sometimes you got to do things like that. And one of those is Brad. And um, so let's be praying that God will help him on that job. They had some hot work to get out and had a deadline. And that's why he had to go to work in this afternoon and uh, pray for that company also. Um, let me take your praise reports and our prayer requests at this time. Start over here. Anybody? Yes. We understand that uh, Samantha's grandfather passed away today. So let's be praying much for her. I don't know what. What she's going to be doing, she's in Georgia, and she was, going to, she was going to come home tomorrow, but I don't know if this is going to change it or not, you know. But anyway, that God will give her traveling mercies and help that family through this. Anybody else on that left over there? Anybody? How about this section right here, sister? Amen. That's paramount to everything else. Yes. Anybody else? Pastor? If you will, remember uh, this morning, that point that we mentioned last week. Uh, church is doing well. I think it's going to be homecoming. And uh, I'm sure you're busy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. Anybody else in that section before I move? This section? Brother? So, brother, no. I was kind of going over there. Me and my dad were talking for a while. I got a first cousin. My mom's a sister. My mom's a sister born. Um, just had a rough night. And God really needs to get a hold of them. Um, we lost his younger brother, um, Khalil, when he had a year younger, about a week younger than me. Yes. On my extreme right, anybody? On the platform, brother? Amen. Praise God. Would you stand, please? And we know our God is able. And let's believe when we call on him. Father, we come to you again on this lovely Lord's Day. Thanking you, Lord, for allowing us to be together just like we are. For every man, woman, boy, and girl that you've sent this evening, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to gather together in the name of Jesus once again. And Lord, we look forward to continuing to bless us, that you'll bless and anoint our praise and worship team. We thank you for the way you blessed them this morning and us. And we pray that you'll do it again tonight and that you'll bless our pastor and strengthen him as he brings the word. And may we receive it in the way that you would have us to. And Lord, we thank you for every prayer that you've answered. You said for us to put them in your hands and you take care of them. So, Lord, we ask that you'll take all of these prayer requests that were given in and that you'll work them out in your way and in your time. You heard what the pastor said that he needed. We pray that you'll work in his behalf and work all these things out. Be with those that are bereaved right now, Samantha and those in Georgia. Lord, that you'll be with them and help them through all of this and give Samantha traveling mercies also, Lord God. Continue to bless. Bless every man, woman, boy, and girl with a special blessing tonight. And those that were not able to be here for whatever reason, we pray that you'll be with them, that they can be here at another time. And Lord, we thank you for that. And may this be a wonderful week. May we all praise you this week. And may we all come back 
at the different times that we're supposed to be here this week, Lord God. In the meantime, help us to lift up your wonderful name and pray for one another. Oh God, that all will be blessed and all will be helped and all needs will be met. And we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for everything that you do for us, oh God. Now, before you even do it, we thank you and bless every part of this service tonight. Yes, Lord, lift him up and help him through all this. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's nothing too hard for you, oh God. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. We're going to speak some life. I am the righteousness of God. I stand in covenant with him. And through this, I have new life, new anointing, and new power. I will not worry, nor have fear. Lord, your word and your spirit, they come for me. I am increasing in your knowledge and in your wisdom. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Through your covenant, I am healthy. I am blessed. There is nothing missing, nothing broken. You have made me a blessing, and everything I touch is blessed. Lord, I thank you that my family walks in obedience to your word and to your will. Take me, Lord. Take Ridgeville Church of God to the highest place in glory. Amen. Lord, we just give you praise tonight, God. We give you honor, Lord Jesus. We worship you and praise your holy name, God. Lord, we give you praise tonight, Father God. We just invite you and Holy Spirit into this place, God. We just give you praise and honor, Lord. God, we bless your name, Lord. God, we give you the highest praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Worship with us tonight. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me, cause you're the living water, the never drying fountain, the comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me, cause you're the living water, the never drying fountain, comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. Amen. I hope that's your prayer. Amen. I want that living water.
water inside of me. I want the stale water, the mosquito water. I, you know, I just I want that fresh water. Amen. I want you to turn with me tonight in Isaiah chapter 25. And while you're turning, let me just say on these announcements, don't forget, ladies, Tuesday night is your Bible study. Men's breakfast will not take place this Saturday, but the following Saturday. Uh, we have our men's gathering. If you want to go, we are taking walk-ins. Uh, Brother Brad, and Brother Phil, and all of them will be going. You can grab hold of them and say, hey, I'd like to go. Can I ride with you? I'm sure they'll gladly strap you to the rooftop, let you ride. They might be taking Big Bertha. I don't know. Oh, they taking Big Bertha. I don't know uh, what uh, Sister Bobby Sue's going to drive, you, you know, around town. She's going to be stuck at home. She ain't going nowhere because they're taking her car. Y'all pray for her, you, you know. But listen, next Sunday, I, I need you here. A couple of wonderful things are going to be happening. Uh, number one, it is our business meeting following the AM service. Number two, uh, I got a gift for you that I'm going to be giving out. Uh, you don't want to miss it. It's one of those things I would like to say if it must be present to receive. Um, but I'm a generous guy, so must be present to receive. And, and uh, But it also is the day that I'm going to be revealing the theme for the year. Uh, normally I announced it earlier, but I really felt like I needed to wait, but this is the day, so you'll want to know about it, but then we have our church work day that's taking place, and we got our family breakfast that's taking place next Saturday as well, uh, not this Saturday, but next taking place, and then we got a work day following it, so there's a lot going on, uh, so just please, we got the homecoming and all of these things so it's going to be a great time so let's look at this in Isaiah chapter 25 real quick oh Lord you are my God and I'm going to exalt you and I'm going to praise your name for you are wonderful and you've done some wonderful things for me and I love the writer saying here your counsels of old are faithful and true God has given us some wonderful words to lean on. And they've been faithful to us, and they've been true, and we're able to hold on to it. And it never fails. If we'll trust God, what he has told us in the past is still good for today. And that's why we continuously read the word, because it hasn't changed all these years later. So I want you to grab hold of that, and I want you to understand that God's got something for you tonight. If you'll be ready to receive, will you? Just hold your tithes and offering in your hand. I want to pray right now. Father, it's so amazing to have a heavenly father like you that's ready to give us good gifts, that's ready to bless us, that's ready to minister to us, Lord. And I believe that you're saturating the grounds. There's a fertile crop that's coming. You've promised it to us, and we have declared it and declared it until many have thought we were crazy. But, Lord, it's just a matter of time before the groundbreaking ceremony takes place. And the fruit of our harvest begins to expose itself and they'll begin to show signs of life. And then those that thought we were crazy will be ready to want to receive of the harvest. But, God, let us protect the harvest. Let us ensure that it goes and grows to its maturity level. And so, God, you have called us to be the protectors of your word and the protectors of your house. And we are here ready and willing to do our part, but also ready to receive that which you have promised us. And so, God, I pray even so, Lord, let it come. Even so, Lord, shower it down upon us. Give us a glimpse of your glory. Give us a glimpse of what you have in store for us, that it will refresh us and renew us. In all these things, God, we will give you praise, honor, and glory. In the most holy name we pray, amen and amen. Remain standing as our ushers serve you tonight.
Aren't you glad the Lord saves? Amen. I don't know about you, but when he saved me, I was not on my way to heaven. <laughs> I was on my way to hell with my pants on fire. And he reached down and saw fit to pull me out. Amen. Everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. And everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. Save Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. Feel my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and Jesus conquered the grave, Savior, He can move the mountains, my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave, Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, 
is our God. He's the name above all names. He's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. times we just maybe discount it because he ain't been as great to us as we want him to be but we probably haven't worshipped him worship him like we should and we blame God for a lot of things that it's really our fault and I'm here today to tell you that if we change our ways we would get more out of God than what we're even entitled to because he really wants to bless us I really want to bless my kids and that you know sometimes I give them more than they're entitled to because you can go to their closet and look I went into my daughter's closet this morning or into her room and I said girl your room's a mess and she said yeah I know I'm working on it A lot of times when our room's a mess, our house is a mess, it means we got more than we know what to do with. But when we say our life's a mess, it ain't because we got more than we know what to do with. Sometimes it's because we ain't allow God to do the cleaning up. I don't want to be a hoarder of the presence of God. I want God to come in and clean up and clean out so freshness can come. So tonight, I want to conclude our message of love because I believe it's time that the church exemplify love. And if you're tired of hearing this, well, it's not going to be the last message on love. But it won't be the continuation message on love. I'll preach on something different on Sunday. So as we read this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 beginning in verse 1 though I speak with tongues of men and of angels but have not love I become a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and of knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could move or remove mountains but have not love I am nothing and though I bestow all the goods feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and but I have not love it profits me nothing you do all that you want to but if you ain't got love it's to no avail you can be seated I really just want to talk to you a little bit tonight if God anoints me to preach evangelistically I'll do so but I just want to talk to you for a moment God's nature is love. In 1 John 4 and 8, we see this. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, then you understand that God is love. You got to know who God is. And when we talk about knowing who God is for yourself, number one, you got to know that God's love. God doesn't hate you. God's not out to punish you. God's not out to destroy you. God's really out to show you how much he loves you. But the problem is that we have grown up in a society that doesn't know how to receive love. If you've come from an abusive home or a destructive home or a verbal abusive home or any type of uh, home that's really not been an outward expressive home, 
uh, you know, I counsel a whole lot of people. When I ask them about their home life, they will say, well, you know, we're just not a very lubby-dubby home. And I tell them, well, you know what? I grew up in a home that wasn't like that was the same way. My dad rarely loved on my mom. We weren't a huggy type bunch. Maybe you know what I'm talking about, but, you know, there was no, let me kiss you goodnight at bed. There was no, I see, you know, the Gilrith family and the Gaskins, when they leave, they're kissing each other, and we'll watch on TV, and a son's leaving, and he kisses his mama on the lips, and my wife be like, oh, did he really kiss his mama on the lips? And I'm like, yeah, he did. He did. We, we just weren't that tight. But you know God wants you to be intimate with him? God don't want you to leave and not say bye. God doesn't want you to come into a room and not say hi. God really wants you to talk. See, love is the nature of God. What is God? If you don't have love, then you don't know God. You don't know who he is. You don't know what he's about. See, John is basically saying the same thing that Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13. No love, no God. All you are is just a bunch of nosy, incomplete people. We should love people. It should be the one thing that everybody says about a church. How do you you know that you're a church of God, not the denomination, but the one after God's own heart is because you just love people. If a pastor or whoever stands up in here and they give a heart's plea of a need and the church responds in love, then you're going to know that that's a, a church after God's own heart. But if we throw a need out there and we get $5, that church don't love God. It really don't. And I'm proud to say that we're we not that church. We're a church that responds. But listen, take on the nature of God and it's the key to our completeness through him. But watch this. First John begins out by dealing with the false prophets because they're denying that Jesus is the flesh of God. And when we talk about being of God, then we got to love. And I'm afraid that we have grown up in a society that would much rather crucify people than love people. We can't be those people. We got to love people. Listen, next month, we in March now, yeah. Next month, had to think for a minute, you know, time's flying, but not that fast. Next month, we're going to go feed some homeless people. Now, listen, if you can't lower yourself off of your high horse to go down there and feed some homeless people that don't have a home, then you're not of God. Now, I realize not everybody can drive down there and all of this thing, but, you, you know, we, we got ways to help in the process. There are ways that you can still help. How do we help? We help the widows and retired ministers by the way that we give. But listen, John says this, to try the spirits and see if they're of God. When we get to verse 7, we're finding that John is saying that love is the key to knowing who God is. If you love him, he begins by all of this. But I'm saying that love is the attribute of God. Look at 1 John 4 and 12. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete or perfect in us. You got to love somebody. You got to be able to allow God to love you and through you because John wants you to see him face to face. Are you going to see God face to face here on this earth? Nobody has ever seen God face to face and lived. But there's going to come a day. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. That's where I want to be. Because why? That's what it's all about. He loved me that I might love him. And the love is 
going to get me from earth to heaven. But I got to love him. It's got to manifest itself in a way that it draws me closer to God. People will know that you have been with Jesus based on how much you love them. And I'm talking about the bad people. I'm talking about them co-workers that you can, you, you, you know, you just feel like you working with the devil. You feel like the Lord has put you in prison and you got to deal with these people day in. God, you just tested my salvation. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with God putting you to a test? What's wrong with God challenging you to see if you are who you say you are? Because all of us need testing at times to see how rooted we really are. Look again in 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully even as I am fully known. Paul says, it is a poor reflection without love. But when I love, then I shall see face to face the expressions of God. When you look at somebody face to face, they may not look like you. They may not smell like you. They may not be as beautiful or as handsome as you. But they're still created in the eyes of God. So don't look at them and snare your nose down, but you need to look at them and see the expressions of God. God created them. That is a soul that you're looking at, and you can either turn them to heaven or to hell. That's how it works. Sinners will only see the partial things of God through you. But your love for them can help them see the other aspects of God. Show them the glory. Again, listen, love shows who you follow. If I say I love my wife, but I never call her, I, I, y'all never see me with her. I've seen preachers, when I finally meet them, brother, I'd be like, oh, so she does exist. Like, if you got a wife, you, you should want to bring her around sometime. I mean, it, you know, at least show people that your wife exists or your husband or whatever the case may be. But listen, love shows who you follow. Why are we saying that? Because John 13, 34 and 35 says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Listen, by this all men shall know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Who you follow shows who you love. If I love God, I'm going to love people. The devil don't love people the way God does. God don't cuss people out. God ain't in the business of chewing people out. God's in the, pe in the business of helping people get to heaven. And he's in the business of... of, of, of Getting people there because, listen, Jesus tells his disciples that if you don't love one another, you can't be my disciple. If you say, well, you know, I, I, I want to be a preacher, but, you know, I, I, I can't love them people. Well, you ain't going to be a preacher. I want to be a life group leader. Listen, you come to Brother Smoke and you say, I want to be a life group teacher, but I don't want to teach them people. Number one, I'm just going to flat out tell you, them people got a name. And when you say them people, you're telling me that you don't like them people? Then you ain't got love. We got to quit identifying people and understand that they're all children of God. And God has a sense of humor. It might be the very ones that you don't want to teach is the ones God's going to make you teach. And matter of fact, it might be the ones you need to teach to humble your little hide and let you deal with them and find yourself in a learning curve because sometimes it's those that really identifies where your passion's at. 
God is trying to get us to love people. The problem is this. I grew up in an era that we were not afraid to go to the nursing home. Now you can hardly get anybody to go to the nursing home. Oh, I don't want them. Hey, you know, I don't want them old people grabbing my hands. Well, whose hand are they going to grab? Their family ain't going to see them. And the nurses don't want to deal with them because they're always yelling in their ears and they always, you know, they just want some love too. We're called as a church to take care of the widows and the orphans. And so if you tell me, well, I want to preach, I don't know why, I'm a pre you know, you won't give me an opportunity to preach in the pulpit. Well, there's a street corner to open right there. Right there. there there's an opportunity to preach. Why has it got to be behind a pulpit? Go to the nursing home. Go to the jail. There are places to preach. It don't have to be where Christians see you. The reality is this, that God calls everybody to minister. You should be ministering right now. In your local places, in your home, how you love your, your spouse. Listen, and let me just uh, stop right here. I was told today, I don't know why you're preaching to me. And I was not preaching to this individual. I was really preaching about my home this morning. Okay, just going regular. My wife fussed at me yesterday. We were going fishing, and I took a cooler. And she said, I, you didn't take that cooler on the fishing trip, did you? She said she didn't yell at me. She did yell at me. She raised her voice at me, that, that tone. She didn't yell at me, but she just emphasized. You didn't put that cooler, you know, that cooler on the boat, did you? And, and so I told her, I'm going to buy my own self a cooler, Brother Gary. That's what I told her. Sure enough, Lord, my witness, I'm, I'm going, you, you know, as soon as I pick up enough cans, I'm going to go buy me a cooler. And oh yeah, <laughs> but listen, my family's not exempt to what I spoke about this morning. That little girl that y'all think is so precious running around. I don't know how you know. I don't know how many times we have to talk to her, and she wakes up. She could be in a dead sleep, and as soon as she hears her brother up. It's like Jesus has done raised Lazarus from the dead. She is up and sprinting to the kitchen table to beat him to a chair. I know y'all's kids don't argue over a chair, but mine do. A chair! A wooden seat with a wooden bag and four legs that I got six of them around the table and they're going to argue over one. but they love each other as much as they fight. I just wish they would love more and fight less. It'd make our life easier. And I'm sure some of you spouses wish y'all would do the same. But if we love people as Christ is asking us, listen, here's the thing. You got to walk in the spirit of love. You can't choose when you love. You got to love at all times. Look at Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is... It's out there. What is it? Love. And joy. And sadness. And sarcasm. And you get on my nerves. And I wish I'd have never met you. No, that, listen, if you really look at this, listen, the fruit of the Spirit is nothing but good things. Joy, love, peace, long-suffering. Oh, yes, yeah, some of y'all have suffered for years with the person you chose to marry. But you chose them. But long-suffering is not a bad thing. But kindness, some of you need to be kinder to your spouse and to your mother-in-laws and your father-in-laws and your kids. And we go on, but, you know, we'll, we'll just move on. Goodness, faithfulness, 
Look, meekness, temperaments against such, there is no law, but look, and they that are Christ have sacrificed the flesh with affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of the vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. We got to quit wanting what everybody else has. Stop wanting what another church has. I, I'm going to, listen, let, let's just put it out there. If you want what the other church has, go to the other church. Because you'll never be happy here wanting what they got. And if you want it so bad, get on your hands and knees and pray God bring it here. But their program might not work here. Furthermore, it might not be that God wants it here. And just because God's got it moving there, well, let's just go a deeper. Let's just call it what it is. It might not be of God there. It might be the flesh. It might be of the devil. And you're looking at it with some ungodly eyes because you ain't prayed enough lately to discern that it's not of God and you want it at your church and all it is is the devil trying to tear up a church. Pray that the real Holy Ghost fire falls in your church. Take ownership of this house. Because God's about to bring out an outpouring and we want it genuinely here. I want every department to grow. I, I want a genuine complaint to me to be pastor. I ain't got no room to put nobody. I'd rather have that than be coming and telling me, you know, Pastor, I don't think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join this other class because I ain't got nobody tonight. Well, my question is going to be, are you inviting anybody? Because if you love, you're going to start inviting people. And quit complaining about your church and start talking good about it. That's not in my notes, so I'll give you that to you for free. But watch, you know, we're getting close to closing. Brotherly love begins with this. Look at Romans 12, 9 and 10. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. You should be against what is evil. I, I, I mean, it, it, it should really turn your stomach where this world is going. The evilness that's in this world. Do you know that uh, the sports governing body voted to change its laws? It, just, it was just voted this week to change its laws to allow transgenders to compete in women's sports. Now, it needs to be headed to the Supreme Court, and the reason they voted for the laws to be changed or the rule books to be changed is because if they didn't, that it would spur on depression and anxiety in transgenders wanting to compete in women's sports. But nowhere was the protection of the natural woman. Well, obviously, a transgender a male going to a woman's sport is going to be able to be a little bit more dominant because of the hormones that exist. So where is the protection of the depression and the anxiety in the natural woman? We're in, a, in an evil society, so abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Hold true to your Bible because the world's trying to take it away from you. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. Listen, if a transgender walks through this door, we're going to love them. I'm not calling a he a she or a she a he. I'm not calling them a them or a, a, a that or a it, a, a, a whatever. I, you are what you were born. And if you're offended, well, you are what you are. You are what God made you. When you die, we extract the DNA, and it's going to say you're either male or female. That's what you are. 
that does not change. But listen, it goes on and it says, in honor, give preference one to another. We, we need to look at them and say, listen, we love you. The suicidal rate in transgenders is high. Because although you change the physicalness, you don't change the mentalness. There's a high reversal of transgenders, again, because you change the physical but not the mental. And now we're allowing children at younger ages to make this determination without even parental consent. And the world is just messed up because some things need a parental consent and some things don't. It, it, we just live in this messed up society. But brotherly love is the very beginning. We still have to love. Hebrews 13 and 1 says, let brotherly love continue. We need to love. The church has to still love one another. Despite what they're doing outside the church, we need to be a place of love. Because listen, there may be some murderers who walk through these doors. We still have to love people. You don't know the full extent. If Alex Murdoch walks through this door, don't worry, he won't. He's bound by life. You know? But if he walked through this door, what are we going to do? Are we going to yell out, guilty? That's not God. God is the judge. We weren't there when it happened. They made a decision off of the evidence presented to them. Guilty, not guilty, whatever the case may be. But we must still love. He's still a soul. Did he, whether he took somebody's life or not, it's still a soul. I have a friend of mine, uh, well, he's not a friend, but the, co uh, the guy I went to school with is the coach of a basketball player in the NBA that, he was at a championship game, and in his bag was a gun, and he pulled the gun out just, just enough, like right here. And now he's being prosecuted, and his life is being turned upside down. A, a stupid decision. Yes, Izzy, I said that. Forgive me. A dumb decision. A split reaction changes his whole life but if he walked through these doors we're still going to love him because we're called to love the church has got a bad rap of crucifying people and that's not what God's ever called you and I to do we've lost loved ones because we have crucified people we have turned people away from church because we have crucified them when God has called us to love let me finish with these two passages, Galatians 6 and 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who are of the household of faith. This should be one of our guiding lights. When you have an opportunity to do good, especially those who are of the household of faith, especially those who are Christians, you should do good to them. Well, they're Christians. They'll get over it. No, that's a bad attitude. You need to get over yourself. If we should treat anyone well, it should be our family. Not just Church of God folks. Christian folks. Christian people hurt Christian people the worst. If you've never been church hurt, count yourself blessed. But just hold on a minute. You're going to be hurt. And it's going to sting, and, and you're going to want to give up on church. But the scripture tells us that we should love one another even when it's hard. And so I'm going to close with this passage right here found in Matthew 5, 43 and 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil 
and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? But if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Loving people is hard. It's never easy. You have to put yourself out there. You remember your first rejection in dating? Growing up in school, we have the little letter that says, do you love me? Check yes or no. Pass the note. Hope the teacher didn't find you. If they check no, your feelings were hurt and you thought it was the end of the world. Regardless of what grade you were in, rejection's hard. But the last place anyone should find rejection is inside the church. God didn't reject them from a cross, so why should we be rejecting them in the house of God? This is the place. Love has no boundaries. I don't want your son or your daughter, your mother, your father, your spouse to come in this house and find rejection. I don't want my kids growing up, and God forbid if they ever drift away from church, to go to another church and find rejection from the house of God. May we always be a church of love. It's powerful. Love covers a multitude of sins. But I charge us today, as we close out our love series, that we would love greater than we've ever loved before. Not just in church, but we would love our spouse greater than we've ever done. We would love our families greater than we've ever done. It's interesting to me when we lose a loved one. And I've done many of funerals. You'll hear a loved one say, please say, love your loved ones tighter. Because you never know when they'll leave. I don't want the day that they're gone for you to finally say, I wish I'd have told them I love them more. If I could tell them one more time I love them. We should tell them while we're alive. It'll do a whole lot better to tell them now where they can hear it and where it can ring in their ears. My mom was 86 years old. And yesterday, as we were leaving, kissing her goodbye, to be able to say, Mom, I love you. I'll see you Thursday. Should Thursday never come, the last words I can say out of my mouth to her was, I love you. Not words of regret, not words of sorrow, not words I wish I could take back, but words I know ring in her ear. And I hope we can all say the same. I want you to stand. And I want us to close with a head held low and eyes closed in just a reflective moment. Maybe tonight you would say, Pastor, I've said some words to someone that has passed away. I know I can't get back. Or maybe someone has said some words to you that have been crossed. And you're hoping death doesn't come before the words are made up apology is given and you know that person immediately of who I'm talking to has come to the forefront of your mind tonight together as one we're going to pray and ask God to help us love despite what others have done to us to be an example of the father that's loved us despite all we've done to him that this house would forever be a house of prayer. If you're comfortable with putting your hand on the shoulder of those next to you, 
I just want you to begin to pray that God would strengthen them and help them to be able to love as the Father loves. So, Father, right now, as I stretch forth my hands to this congregation and even to these that are watching through social media, God, you know their hearts. You know the hearts of these that have had ill words spoken to them and that those words ring as a stinger. And you know maybe they've said words that ring as a stinger into the hearts of someone else. But, God, it is our passion and our desire to be a house of love. And so, Lord, I pray right now that before death calls us home, before death calls us the home of those that have spoken ill towards us, that somehow and in some way an apology can be made. But, Lord, at least on our end, if an apology can never be made, could we at least say, Father, forgive us for the words in which we have spoken to others that have hurt them that did not exhibit the love of our Father. And Father, would you help us to receive forgiveness for those that have spoken ill toward us, that we could forgive and reduce the stinging, that love would be what we're all about, that we don't hold on to the past, but we can march forward and have the joy and the peace and the long-suffering and the hope of tomorrow that it brings and that a smile can return to our face because you are love. And the more that we become like you, the more we want to be loved and showing love one for another. And we want people to know that we are your disciples. And you said, they will know that you are my disciple by the way that you love one another. So God, would you help us not to speak ill toward one another, but love love and your word tells us that love covers a multitude of sin and those that have sinned against us lord let us just love you're the righteous judge and we give it to you to carry that burden lord and help us just walk in love and grace and mercy and not allow the enemy to grab hold to seek revenge But God, to be the one that rises above and hand it all to you. And in due time, Lord, we know that you will fight our battles for us. And also in the end, we'll reap the reward that you have bestowed before us for our faithfulness to the Father. Bless this congregation. And bless us, Lord, as we march toward the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus mighty name we pray would you bless our ladies as they come Tuesday would you bless the council as they come Tuesday minister to us on Wednesday touch the men's gathering on Saturday bless all of those that will be traveling and on Sunday Lord as we come back into the father's house would you minister Help us in our financial meeting, Lord. Let us show the blessings that you have bestowed upon this house. Everything we do for you, Lord, you receive the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you love on somebody? Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God.